I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and this is Equal Entertainment. Taylor Swift fans turned out in force this weekend for the film version of her Eras Tour. The film debuted in first place, making a massive $95 to $97 million in ticket sales in North America. That could make it the biggest October opening ever, topping the 2019 movie Joker. Taylor Swift's late August announcement that a film of her era's tour would hit theaters took everyone by surprise. This was completely out of nowhere, it seems. A dream come true and music to the ears of theater owners. Box office analyst Paul DeGarabedian says fans immediately began buying advance tickets like it was, well, a Taylor Swift tour. They had pre-sales that were reported to be early on within the first 24 hours at about $29 million. Multiple theater chains are reporting record pre-sales. That made Friday the 13th a scary release date for other studio films. Very notably, The Exorcist Believer, which was set for that Friday the 13th, appropriately enough, they had to move back to the 6th. Start over, start fresh create the new and that's what the renaissance is about yours isn't the only major music tour headed to theaters renaissance a film by beyonce chronicling the tour that drew 2.7 million fans figures to bring more to theaters when it opens december 1st i think we're gonna see a, a renaissance if you will in the whole genre of concert films and music in theaters it's gonna be called the eras tour you there. The era's tour accounted for more than 70% of the total weekend box office grosses. Hollywood and fans are mourning the loss of iconic actress and businesswoman Suzanne Somers. She battled breast cancer for more than two decades. She was first diagnosed in 2001. Then in July, Summers shared with fans that her cancer had reemerged. She was an icon of the small screen. Summers is best known for her role as Chrissy Snow in the sitcom Three's Company. Her demands for equal pay during the show's fifth season got her fired. She was also a prominent businesswoman known for selling the thigh master in the 1980s. Summers died just one day before her 77th birthday. Disney is donating $2 million to organizations providing humanitarian relief in Israel. Disney CEO Robert Iger condemned the Hamas attacks on Israel. He says the company will continue to work to find more ways to support the region and help those affected by the war. $1 million will go to an organization that provides medical and blood banking services. The other $1 million will go to other nonprofit organizations that are helping children in the region. Disney also plans to match up to $25,000 in employee donations. Rod Stewart is refusing to perform in Saudi Arabia because the country is known for its poor record on LGBTQ plus rights. Stewart says in a post on Instagram that he's grateful that he has a choice whether or not to perform in Saudi Arabia. He also says he wants to shine a light on the injustices in Saudi Arabia for women, the LGBTQ community, and the press. The singer did not say who invited him or how much money he turned down, but he's hoping to ignite what he called positive change. A report from Amnesty International highlights patterns of discrimination and harassment in the country targeting women and the LGBTQ plus community, including a new male guardianship law and the criminalization of queer relationships. Actress, model, and trans activist Dominique Jackson is the 2023 National Leadership Award recipient for the National LGBTQ Task Force. Jackson is now reflecting on her journey and the road that lies ahead for herself and the trans community. Hi, welcome Dominique Jackson, winner of the 2023 National Leadership Award from the National LGBTQ Task Force. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, as you said that, uh, something inside of me jumped. <laughs> like, yeah. well, I was like, whoa. It, I mean, it, but it is so deserved. And I wonder, for folks who may be unfamiliar with your uh, past, um, you know, your work, and I, I'm being careful because I don't know what I can say with the strikes or what you can say about work that you've done. So. I just wonder, would you share a little bit about some of your work generally uh, and, you know, why the task force is honoring you? Um, so I, um, okay, I can answer this last question first. Yeah. Um, 
I have no idea why. I, I appreciate <laughs> it, but I don't know because yeah. I'm just really actually just living my life. I didn't right. want to, um, I saw past lives, my brothers, my sisters, my elders, and I just knew that I could live a life. And so I worked really, really, really hard towards that, hoping that one day I would be able to find space and a space would be available for me to, uh, to, to, to work, to have a comfortable life, to be able to wake up in the morning and, you know, know that I had a, a job or something that would be able to pay my bills, that I would be able to live the li a li life in a space that is uh, comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, along the way I, I started doing work with, um, organizations because after uh, I got a negative result from Callan Lord for an HIV test, which took me eight years to do, um, I felt that it was important for me mm -hmm. to get back into trying to help others, but in helping others, it was helping myself because I always felt that um, I, I didn't have a green card. So I could not really, uh, work properly in the US, I could do my shows and stuff like that, that was it. And so I thought that I had no opportunity. So I wanted to to help those, to give them encouragement. I can't do it, so maybe you can. So I started to, you know, talk to my peers about mm -hmm. their lives, about what they were doing. And, you know, I did that from stage because I was a performer. Um, well, I am a performer, but yes. I did, um, back then we called ourselves showgirls because we're very different from drag queens. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was a showgirl performance and that's what I did for quite a while. And I, everyone always told me I should model and I loved modeling. Naomi Campbell, the Fab Five, Linda Evangelista, Beverly Johnson, Iman, my favorites. I felt inspiration from them. And then there was Tracy Norman mm. uh, who let me know that we can do it, even though she was, you know, shaded and, and treated unfairly, you know, she still was redeemed. She still got that call later mm -hmm. on. So I always felt that I could fulfill my dreams. I just didn't think that they could happen. So I wanted other people to fulfill their dreams. Mm -hmm. And then lo and behold, things came along and I was able to fulfill my dreams and become a model, get on yeah. those runways and, um, and perform and, and, and bring my ability to it. And then television came. So mm -hmm. I was able to, I did a reality show first and I was like, I'm not reality. I don't Whoa. really like the drama, <laughs> but I had this, I would watch mm -hmm. television and I would see a lot of shows and, you know, the um, crime investigation shows really appealed to me. And then there were actors that were really amazing, like Angela Bassett and Meryl Streep. And I studied Angela Bassett so that I could, you know, really like understand because she is just so moving and so yeah. amazing in her work. And I thought to myself, I could never get that opportunity, but I'm going to prepare. Yeah. And I got the opportunity to be on television, to be a part of a historical show, okay. which, you know, spoke life mm -hmm. and truth to tell the stories that I've been able to tell in, in my work is absolutely amazing. I'm Pisces, so I'm diehard. I have this thing about me where I believe that the world is really beautiful and we're really amazing. And instead of competing with each other and trying to hurt each other, we can deal with our own traumas and realize that we can really help each other, work together, become a part of a society that cares for each other. Yeah. You know, so um, being a part of the show and telling that story was beyond amazing. I got to cry. I got to laugh. I got to heal on my own time. Mm -hmm. I got to see what actually I survived because I was a part of that. I, I lived through that. And in living through that, the experience, I was so toughened that I, you know, I looked at it as, oh, it was nothing. And then when the world turned around and said, yes, this is our story. This is something that we see and we thank you and we appreciate, you know, the, the, the coverage that it took for everyone to be able to come together to tell that story. It was like, whoa, mm -hmm. we did something here. We really did something. It feels, it feels absolutely amazing. Madonna is healthy again and ready to kick off her new celebration world tour in London.
Madonna battled a bacterial infection in June that caused her to cancel the first leg of her tour in North America. She told the crowd in London that she and her doctors didn't think she was going to make it. But Madonna also credited her children for helping her fight and to survive. The North American leg of the tour will begin this December in Brooklyn. You can watch The Advocate channel live by downloading our app in the Apple or Google Play Store. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. For The Advocate channel, I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and thank you for watching.